God so loved that he gave his son to lay down his life for the sake of us. He bore the weight of our sin and shame with a cry he said, it is finished. Christ the Lord overcame the darkness, he's alive, death has been defeated, for he made us a way by which we have been saved, he's the saviour of the world. So we lift up a shout for his fame and renown, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Jesus saviour of the Yeah.
to be with you again kind of this is as good as we're gonna get for a while isn't it so I'm thankful for it but I am obviously missing you all so so much uh, and I just hope that you're okay I hope you're well I hope you know you're easing into this new normal of ours and and uh, just praying for you all constantly for us all as a family like in PEMS um, and this morning uh, or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you're watching this. That's one of the peaks, isn't it? Um, I've just given myself a super simple uh, task, or I think it is, it might not be, once I get going, we'll see. Um, but all I really want to do today, uh, or not even what I want to do, but just as I was praying uh, through things and you know, chatting to God about this, this day, this Sunday, or, um, or whatever, I just, I felt like, uh, really heavy like all I needed to do right now all he wanted of me today was just to remind you who is in your corner so like before I dig in I just wonder if just for a second just like indulge me humor me I just want you to think about everything that is like at the forefront of your mind right now you know like all of the all of the changes, you know, the plans that have been delayed or fast forwarded or, you know, things that may be up in the air. Maybe it's work, maybe it's relational, maybe it's about parenting or marriage or um, just anything. The good, the bad, the ugly and everything in between. Just the something that's, you know, just what's on the forefront of your mind right now. What are you going through right now? Uh, just think about it and then I just want you to like keep it there, <laughs> you know, like keep it in front of you because I just really, really feel and believe that God just wants to remind you who's in his, co who's in your corner um, amongst all of that, like not despite all of that, but right in the middle of all of that, there's someone in your corner and uh, you can probably already guess who it is, but we'll go the long way around, otherwise this would be a very short talk. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use, well, the part of the Bible I'm going to use is, and some of you are going to hate me for this, uh, the beginning of Jesus' life, his birth, perhaps. And uh, some of you, your eyes have lit up and you're buzzing and the Gavin and Stacey Christmas special is playing in your head already and, you know, Michael Buble is coming to the forefront of your mind and you're loving it. Uh, and Christmas is very much one of those things on the forefront of your mind and others of you I know that I'm putting you in like a cold sweat right now and you are hating me and you are just wanting me to shut up um if that is you just disconnect this story for me like from Christmas because I'm I'm gonna go for it so um just disconnect it uh disconnect it from everything that you are not ready for uh but if you're loving the reference uh and loving the the hints of Christmas great keep it um but anyway uh what I want to sort of like break open a little bit is sort of the 
the grittiness of the story. So we love celebrating the nativity like we love it we love you know dressing up and watching you know cute kids be all of these amazing characters we love the angels and the shepherds and the gifts and the you know the animals and the everything and we love 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 all of just that glory and it is there like it is the most beautiful heavenly understated yet magnificent entrance into the world that obviously history has ever seen it was one of the greatest and most spectacular nights and periods of time that we have ever and will ever seen see if not the uh, if not the most spectacular and it's all there it is the most beautiful story like don't get me wrong but also as i've been reading matthew recently and sort of like hones in on on this little part of uh of like the biblical story, I've noticed that actually at its core, like uh, at its base level, it's a kind of bewildering story. You know, it's a kind of traumatic story. It's a story of two very young people having to deal with a whole lot. Mary and Joseph, these two, you know, we assume because of, you know, Jewish customs at the time, we assume they were teenagers. And if I just give you a bit of context about what their life would have looked like. So they, we know that they lived in a very small town. Town is even a bit of a stretch, probably more of a village, more of a hamlet. Um, just a few big extended families all in one community. That's kind of where they lived. And, and so they, had, they would have had a lot of history. They would have known each other. They would have known of each other's families. And their union, their marriage would have been planned since around about the time they were born since infancy it would have been planned and they just kind of would have grown up knowing that their lives were intertwined with each other kind of like for better or worse whether they liked it or not um and it was arranged for them by their parents and that is because marriage at that time was about more than love it was about more than the fact that mary loved joseph or joseph loved mary um it was like an all-encompassing life arrangement it was to do with social standing, it was to do with family, it was to do with religious standing, it was to do with, you know, economics, it was to do with business and and everything else. It was to do with legacy and property and livestock and, you know, legacy, if I already said that. Um, <laughs> it was to do with everything. Everything was tied up in this union between Mary and Joseph. And, and when I say that they were engaged, that is much more official than in our culture now it means it was pretty much a done deal a done deal that they were preparing for marriage that they were off the market um it was done you know notice that when joseph freaks out because of everything that's happening it says he had to divorce mary he had to go through a legal process if he wanted to step back that's how official this union was already and they were in a pretty good place mary and joseph because of this they knew that they had security as long as they had each other. They knew that their, you know, everything had been worked out for them down to the smallest detail. That their business and their family and any children they may have, their, their um, religious standing, their social standing, was all wrapped up in their union. Joseph would have known that his whole life was wrapped up in Mary and it was going well. They were engaged, it was on track, they were on solid ground, it was okay. You know, everything was planned. And then, Jesus, only comes, you know, can you imagine? So if we just go from Joseph's perspective a second. So can you imagine having your whole life ahead of you and you can literally see it like step by step, you know where it's gonna go and, and it's all hinged on this woman Mary and the union and you know your families are in on it and it's just always been your reality and then one conversation with Mary before you're married but while you are legally tied to each other one bewildering conversation where she tells you that she's pregnant and that the child mind-blowingly is the son of God like just from a very human level can you imagine Joseph's initial thoughts his fears, his questions, can you imagine like his prayers that night? Can you imagine like everything that was built up for him by his parents and himself, everything he'd been preparing for, everything he'd held as his security, just crumbling like before his eyes in this one conversation he has with Mary. Like, can you imagine? And 
And so that's why at its core for these two teenagers, Chris, the, oh I just said, I'm sorry if that freaks you out, but the nativity story um, is a story of two young people going into completely unknown territory. Unprecedented times. Sound familiar? Um, just going ahead with nothing but the word of God to guide them. And they go through a tricky few years, like that at times dangerous, at times confusing, at times surprising, uh, you know, and they go through all of this together, knowing that they have each other and they have God and that's kind of it. They know that the rumour mill about this suspicious pregnancy would be going crazy, that they would live with this for the rest of their lives and they wouldn't know what that would mean for them or for this child or for any children coming. Like, what I'm trying to get across to you is that it was completely unknown. It was completely unknown. It was such a scary journey they were about to, they were about to embark on. And yet amongst all of this, so just put yourself in those terrified shoes for a second. And yet amongst all of this, the baby, Jesus, you know, with hindsight, we know that it was more than worth it and that, you know, God, God's fingerprints were all over it. But at the time they were terrified and the baby is given this name. And this is where I'm going to jump into Matthew 1 verse 23. And it says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And then mentally underline this bit. This is where I'm like rooting myself. And they will call him Emmanuel in brackets, which means God is with us. And like, I can just imagine that for Mary and for Joseph and for their families, you know, their extended families and that, and for, you know, for everyone wrapped up in, in and invested in their union, that this name, this title, Emmanuel, God with us, was something they had no choice but to cling to with everything they had. With everything they had, this promise that God was going to be with them. So God names his son, I am with you. Literally, Emmanuel literally means God with us. Literally, like the literal definition is God in the same place at the same time time as us that is the name that is the title that god gives his son right at the beginning and what i love about this title what i love about this name is kind of like thinking and maybe this is a bit fantastical but i kind of like picture god um you know sort of thinking and how do i sum up everything that this child is going to be for them like how do i sum up everything that this baby boy, that this child is going to bring about, that everything he has to offer, how do I sum up his kindness and yet his power, his, you know, his faithfulness and his significance, how do I sum up how he's going to change history, like what name can I choose which, that will remind them how much I love them, that will remind them that I'm fighting for them, that I see them, that I hear them, what name can I choose that reminds them that they are adored, what name, what title can I possibly pick that encompasses everything that I am offering them in the birth of this baby? Oh, maybe I'm with you. Like, maybe I'm with you. That name just sums it up. And so that name, Emmanuel, God with us, literally, so, so think about it for a second. Think about it like this. Jesus' name is literally, I'm right here. Jesus' name is literally, I'm going to work with you tomorrow. Jesus' name is literally, we're going to face this together. Jesus' name is literally, I'm sat here listening to your worries. Jesus' name is literally, I'm not going anywhere. That's his name. Like how much clearer can God make it to us? You know, like the author jumped onto the pages and told us that he was doing that. Like the architect jumped into his own plans, became one of us, became one of us, moved into the neighborhood and told us that he was doing it because he loved us. He made it his name, I'm with you. That was the name he picked that would encompass everything that Jesus came to be, everything that he came to do, everything that he came to, that he has come to stand for, everything that he gives us is in, encapsulated in that one phrase, in that one name, I'm here. I'm with you, I'm here. 
and the book of Matthew and sort of the whole New Testament to be honest and the whole of history um, but the book of Matthew in particular is literally a story about that name Emmanuel becoming a reality played out in the lives of people that in very spiritual and yet very practical and very gritty and very you know physical in relational ways and economic ways in every way in every sphere of life that name Emmanuel God with you God with us is played out and turns people's lives upside down or probably rather right side up it changes people Jesus' very presence the very realness of his presence on the earth completely changed things for so many people and that is the book of Matthew just story after story of that beauty and then so what I've just read um, you will call him Emmanuel which means God with us that's chapter one that is chapter one of Matthew and what I'm going to do now is skip to chapter 28 the final chapter uh, but more than that I'm going to go to the final sentence of the final chapter of Matthew's book the final sentence and it is the words of Jesus it is he's speaking to his disciples and to us um, and he says this okay and surely I am with you always to the end of the age and surely I am with you always until the end of the age you see Matthew was really trying to tell us something from the first chapter to the final sentence of the last chapter where Jesus reinforces again, remember my name, remember who I am. Matthew's trying to tell us something, he's trying to remind us and leave us in no question, leave us in no doubt of who is in our corner, right now. Jesus says it, surely I am with you always. So surely my name is true. Surely I am Emmanuel. Surely I am God with you to the very end of the age, forever and ever. I ain't going anywhere. This is never gonna stop being true. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew wants to leave you in zero doubt that you right now have someone with you and his name is Emmanuel. That there is someone in the same place at the same time as you. That there is someone fighting your corner, that there is someone who hears you, that there is someone who sees you, that understands you, that gets you, that loves you and adores you and his name wants to remind you of that. His name is, I'm right here. His name is Jesus. His name is Emmanuel. And that is just truth. That's just true. That's just who Jesus is. That is just what he lived, died, rose again to give you. That is like the core on which everything else we believe and we trust hangs off. That's just true. And the nature of grace is that there's nothing we've done to earn that. Nothing. It's got nothing to do with us and a whole lot to do with Jesus. It's just the nature of the gospel, isn't it? It's just the nature of the good news. That's just the nature of grace. So... There is nothing you can do to earn that. You have not earned that, but it's yours anyway. God's presence is yours. His name is, I am with you. And that's not out of duty. That's not his name out of duty or out of a sense of like, you know, responsibility for you. Um, it's not out of like, oh gosh, they need me again. You know, what a pain. There is none of that in Jesus. There is none of that. It is his joy and his delight to spend every second of every day with you because he is madly, inconceivably, unexplainably in love with you. He adores you. He adores you. And the way, you know, the, the greatest, most beautiful way he knows to express that is to say, I'm with you always you always have my company you always have my attention you always have my you know my full gaze on you you will never go a day without me you will never say a word that i won't hear you will never face a challenge that i'm not there that is how he shows us and tells us that he loves us and he named his son i'm with you to remind us every single day whatever we face whatever that day looks like from the mundane to the absolutely extraordinary from the challenging to the blissful he's there his name is I'll be there too 
His name is, I'll meet you there tomorrow. His name is, I'll see you in the morning. It's his name. It's his name. And that will always be the case, you know, whether we are acutely aware of it or we get to the end of the day and we realise we haven't given Jesus, you know, a second thought. It's still the case. It's still the case because, like I said, it's got nothing to do with us. It's just who he is. But, but, I feel like God has been challenging me recently through this, kind of through this message, you know, and some other some other things uh, to notice. I feel like he's been challenging me to train myself to kind of like stand more upright, if you know what I mean, to be aware from my head to my toes, to be aware that every single room I walk into, he is walking into it with me. I feel like he's challenging me and, uh, and maybe us, maybe us, you know, um, and reminding me that when I, when I talk about God with me, when I talk about Emmanuel, what I'm not talking about is, oh, I've got a good theology with me. Oh, I've got a good idea with me. Oh, I've got a nice thought with me. Oh, I've got a really, you know, pretty sounding verse with me. Oh, I've got a talk with me or a sermon with me or, a, you know, oh, I've got my religion with me to strengthen me in this challenge in this day. No, no, that is not his name. His name is not religion with you. His name is I am with you. He is with you. The very presence of God with you. He is with you. And so maybe it's about time. I know that I know that it is the case for me. If you feel the same, then great, let's do it together. Maybe it's about time we trained ourselves to be more aware of it. To be more aware of who's fighting our corner. And what I would usually do, and what I kind of started doing, was coming up with examples of how you this may play out in your life. You know, like what you may see as a result of like noticing and and placing Jesus in your day, you know, like he's always there anyway, but in your mind, um, you know, of the joy and the peace and the breakthrough and the miracles that are bound to come from that. And I sort of started like getting examples in my head and then I realized that I can't, I don't even have the words. I don't even have the words. I don't have the examples to tell you what God wants to do in your life. I kind of like the thought of that being a little secret between you and him, you know, like, I can't box him up. I have no idea what that will mean for you in your current circumstances as you are, but he does. He does, he knows what he wants to do in your life. I don't. So I'm not gonna box him up with examples of what may or may not burst into your days when you acknowledge and claim that Jesus is in the same place at the same time as you, but I know it's gonna be good. I know that there are gonna be stories. I know that things are gonna change. I know that they are and uh, yeah, like I say, I just kind of like the thought of that just being between you and God. He knows you like no one else. You know him in a way that no one else does. So I like, I like the thought of you two hanging on to that. But know that things will change. They absolutely will. He is with you, even in the tricky times, with you. Not going anywhere, refusing to be anywhere that you are not. So you never have to go anywhere that he is not. How good is that? How good is that and so because of that all I want to do is remind you who's in your corner like I say all I want to do is remind you of Jesus's name all I want to do is um, if you're anything like me then what happens in my life sometimes is I'll you know something God has said you know something I've read in the Bible something he said you know through a person something I know about him uh, something he said about himself, what he does, who he is, who I am, what I do. Um, it can start really clear and punchy, you know, and then life happens. And whether I realise it or not, somewhere along the line, I can sometimes put a question mark next to what I was so sure of a little while ago. I can put a question mark next to something God has said. And so all I want to do this morning, and, and if I've done this a little bit for you, then success, total praise hands to God, um, is just take that question mark away. You, I do, like, I feel like God no longer wants you to question where he is. The answer is his name. He's with you <laughs> in the same place at the same time as you. So I'm just going to read 
one more verse, one more thing, and then I think I'm just going to allow a little bit of space, which is always feels a bit iffy doing it kind of over this medium, but God is bigger. God is bigger than our circumstances, so I know that that he really wants to take that question mark away from from the question of where he's at, from the question of his presence. He really wants to remind you of his name right amongst your circumstances right now. He really wants to remind you that you don't have to run to him. He is with you. And um, and so I'm going to read something and then I'm just going to allow space for him to take that question mark away from you. I'm really hoping that he is doing a lot of the work right now. Uh, I'm kind of trusting and relying on that. So I am going to read Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. It'll pro it, well, it might sound quite familiar to you, but I'm going to read it slowly. And I'm just praying right now that God is going to do something that I can't do and he's just going to make the truth of every single word, every single line of this verse, just like hit your heart a bit differently today. So just maybe like take a moment and think, place yourself in like your own circumstances, you know, think about all those things that you thought about at the beginning. And I'm just going to read this over you, but kind of just imagine it's not me because this is God's word, this isn't mine. This is God's word. This is what he speaks and promises over you. This is his name. Okay? So, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. So just that last little bit again, there is nothing in all of creation. And feel free to maybe add your own little things in there. No struggles, no weaknesses, no weak challenges, no disappointment, no doubts nothing in in me nothing around me nothing in me nothing that i have faced nothing that i will face nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of god that is in jesus from the love of god that is in your emmanuel from the love of god that is in the one who says i am here i am near nothing can separate you from the one who is in the same place at the same time. Nothing can separate you. Nothing. We are convinced that nothing can separate us. And so I'm just going to pray over you guys now. And again, just kind of breathe, I guess, like, uh, just rest into it, I'm just going to pray. And Lord God, our Emmanuel, our God with us, our God in the same place, our God in our homes, our God in our cars, our God in our work, our God in our commutes, our God who wants and adores and loves and cherishes us, our God who does spend second of every day with us in our company our God we just welcome you we just invite you into where we're at right now we just want to acknowledge that you are and have been and always will be right here you are here come and remind us Come and make it completely, undeniably obvious that you are here. Come and make your presence more obvious, more clear than it has ever been. Lord, I pray for every single heart that is watching this, wherever they are, I pray that you would just remind them them of the power of your name, of the goodness, of the truth of your name. Remind them that you are and always will be Emmanuel, God.
record with them. Never change it, never leave it. Write them how much you love them and adore them and fight for them. Lord Jesus, I remind you that we just welcome you into our day today, into our lives. Come and fill us up with your presence. Remind us that you are and always will be enough. Thank you, God.
for your message today um, we really hope that that what you've heard today and seen today's service will encourage you this week as, um, as we go back into our weeks we're going to finish the service in prayer father we thank you that we can join together online as a church family I pray this week as as we go about our lives that we will feel your presence Lord Pray for all those people who are lonely or ill or suffering, that they will feel your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your love and all that you give to us. Amen. <laughs>